Uh, hi. Um, so uh, this is kind of new work. Uh, I'm a research scientist at Spotify. Um, I live in New York. If you're passing through or uh, you live there, you'd be, um, you know, don't hesitate to uh, to uh, meet up for a chat if you like. So this, uh, the title of this talk is Empirical Bayes by Meta Model Monte Carlo M3C. And uh, my starting point is Bayesian optimization. So uh, Bayesian optimization for machine learning algorithms specifically. So when I refer to BEO or Bayesian optimization, I'm referring to the, the context in which it's used to uh, tune hyperparameters. So the, the premise is that there's, uh, we have all these models and approximate algorithms, uh, sorry, approximate inference procedures for fitting them, and uh, they always, they usually come with hyperparameters eta. So that could be like the learning rate, could be the number of layers, could be the concentration hype, uh, parameter. Some people know how to choose eta. Uh, other people have to systematically figure them out using something like a grid search. And both ways are expensive, so either you have to be in the field for 10 years or um, you have to do uh, thousands, possibly, runs of an approximate inference algorithm for different uh, hyperparameters. So Bayesian optimization offers a way to uh, kind of choose eta without grid search. Uh, the basic idea is to use a meta model as a guide to regions of hyperparameter hyper configurations that perform well. Uh, and uh, when we say perform well, uh, I mean maximize marginal likelihood on how that eta. But uh, you could also consider um, things like uh, minimizing mean squared error or maximizing accuracy as proxies for, for maximizing marginal likelihood. And there's two kind of aspects of uh, Bayesian optimization. The first is uh, that you have a, a meta model, this guide to regions, and then an acquisition strategy. So usually the meta model is a Gaussian process because uh, of nice properties that, that it holds. And um, let me turn this on. So it, um, we can place the Gaussian process prior on um, some uh, non-negative uh, function um, with normalization. Uh, and notice, oh, so uh, there, there's often a lot of um, hyperparameters related to the kernel itself. I'm not going to be talking about those hyperparameters, but I am going to be talking about the hyperparameters to the uh, kind of uh, the machine learning algorithm that lives inside here. In the acquisition strategy, we have a bunch of options for acquisition. So here's a, a, a nice schematic from a recent review paper on uh, Bayesian optimization. Um, so let's say you've seen uh, two data points. So the y-axis is the um, marginal likelihood, the x-axis is um, eta. You've seen two evaluations of your approximate inference algorithm, and your, your meta model, uh, if it's the solid line, is some approximation of the true dotted line. And then we say that there's an acquisition function that tells you um, where to evaluate next. And there's, there's various options like upper confidence bound, uh, expected improvement, or Thompson sampling. So one thing that may be obvious is that, or may not be obvious, is that Bayesian optimization is an empirical Bayes procedure. And to see that, um, just uh, look at these expectations. So to predict new data, x star, conditioned on uh, training data, x, we're taking an average of the predictive densities over draws from the posterior. So this posterior is, is expensive to obtain, and it's conditioned on uh, hyperparameters. Pirical Bayes says, um, let's take the mode of the um, posterior of hyperparameters conditioned on data. And uh, usually it raises eyebrow, well, it's, it's unusual in the sense that it uses the data twice. So you, you, you use the, the data to get a posterior over hyperparameters, um, and you're also using the data to get posterior over uh, thetas. So uh, the other talks that you might see today will, will might, might mention these procedures, like Marco T. Monte Carlo, Variational Influence, and those are approximations to this part. So I'm going to be talking more about this outer expectation. And, um, okay. okay, so here are some surprising features of BO. So the assumption of, of the method is that it's expensive to approximate the series. But BO throws away all but one of them. 
it, it keeps the best one. So if you evaluate 100 posteriors under different ATAs, um, you throw away 99 and keep the best one. Um, but surely the other posteriors have something to say about the data, even though they aren't optimal. There's also a danger of overfitting the validation data. So it, it grows with the dimensionality of, of eta. Um, so so that is, that is a, a well-recognized danger of, of using a procedure like this. And so here's an example. So um, I fit LDA using uh, Bayesian optimization. Uh, on the x-axis, um, uh, sorry, on the y-axis is the um, negative uh, marginal log likelihood. I ordered um, all the trials in the Bayesian optimization procedure by, um, from the best performing to the worst performing. Uh, and just to note, so this is on validation data set. So um, just to make it explicit, we have, we have our data, we split it into training data, validation data, and testing data. Um, so the, the posterior approximation is, is based on the training data, and so now this is performance on unseen validation data. But now let's um, look at what happens for the same hyperparameter posteriors on the testing data. So if we were to use empirical Bayes, uh, as it currently is, we would take the leftmost bar here, which as you can see, performs um, a little bit worse than the second best. And so the strategy I'm going to be talking about um, uh, now is, is the idea that you want to be averaging over uh, a bunch of the best uh, datas. And hopefully that will mitigate this problem of overfitting. It will also kind of, um, sort of fix this um, counterintuitive feature of BO, which is that you're throwing away um, all the rest of the series. So, um, and the strategy I'm going to look at is uh, based on a method called Bayes Empirical Bayes. Um, so here, here's a good review article on what Bayes Empirical Bayes is. Um, basically, uh, so before we had um, a point estimate of eta given data, now we're going to replace the data with some fixed hyper hyperparameter lambda, uh, and then the rest is the same. Okay, so this is this is a full expectation rather than just a, a delta function here. So this will get at this this uh, this feature of sorry, this feature of averaging over velocities for series. But um, let's consider something that might even be better. So when we have only a few um, evaluations, so 100 I consider it as a few, we usually like to incorporate some optimizers, some uh, point estimates, because they can have lower variance. And so uh, we, we can consider a natural extension to Bayes empirical Bayes, where we um, uh, take a, a, a map estimate of the hyper hyper parameter. So kind of we're like extending empirical Bayes to, to another level in the Bayesian hierarchy. And this again has the flavor of using the data twice. So the data is being used to select the hyper prime, hyper hyper parameter, and it's being used to find the posterior. And then here's another sort of um, here's another idea that's um, that's equivalent to empirical Bayes, but without the point estimate. So these are three closely related methods, and they can all be um, estimated using a method called M3C that I'm going to talk about next. <laughs> So empirical Bayes by Metamodel Monte Carlo and 3C is a family of solutions based on Monte Carlo sampling of hyperparameters. So we're going to draw hyperparameters from some distribution um, that's determined by the expectations that I, I just showed on the previous slide. And then we're going to um, do a Monte Carlo um, average of those uh, hyperparameters. And um, so the weight and the eta are determined by the choice of expectation. Uh, the details will be on the poster and in the paper. And uh, there's kind of a, a wacky idea sort of behind this on where you get the, the sample of hyper, hyper um, sorry, where you get the sample of ATAs, the hyperparameters. Um, and here's the idea. So we have a meta model of the marginal likelihood from which we draw samples of ATA. So we're going to repeat uh, these, these three, three steps um, for each iteration S. The first step is to draw um, from the posterior, the, the Gaussian process, the meta model, conditioned on uh, the history of evaluations. 
And then we're going to treat this function here as um, a log marginal likelihood. So if we multiply by the prior and then normalize, then this should give us a posterior over the um, hyperparameters condition on data. That's where the data enters in, enters in twice. And then, so this is now our candidate evaluation point. We run an expensive approximation procedure that lets us evaluate what the marginal likelihood is at that point. And then the F and the eta feed back into the history and allow us to update the meta model. It's kind of wacky because um, GP is a prior of the functions, we're drawing a function, but the function here is a distribution from which we're drawing hyperparameters. So uh, an interesting point is that uh, you can actually recover Thompson sampling from this. So if you replace step two with um, a maximization instead of, uh, uh, instead of a sample, and you use a uniform prior for eta, then um, this, that is Thompson sampling. So Thompson sampling says, let's draw, um, uh, let's draw from a realization of the rewards, uh, maximize it, and then evaluate um, with our environment the next step. Um, so that's interesting. So we can apply these methods to um, uh, model, real models with hyperparameter selection. So the first uh, setup I had was uh, LDA on uh, a data set using stochastic variable inference. Um, I fit four hyperparameters with these ranges. So it's a mixture of model-based hyperparameters and learning-based hyperparameters, uh, the number of topics, um, some uh, yeah, a prior from the Dirichlet on the document topics, a prior to the Dirichlet on the topic words, and then a learning rate hyperparameter. Um, so there's, uh, so I tried these on empirical Bayes, which is the kind of the standard method, and then the three candidates that I discussed earlier. So there's a few things I want to point you towards. So the first is that, um, uh, first is that the type two empirical Bayes, the, the um, the hierarchical approach that also has some optimization um, does uh, uh, significantly better than all the other approaches, including empirical Bayes. And the other aspect is that um, if you look at if you look at doing the procedure on validation versus not using validation, um, with the the methods that um, do uh, sort of model averaging, you get an improvement using validation. Whereas the method that uses optimization in the, the simple way, you do worse. So this uh, empirical base is, is um, in some sense uh, um, uh, overfitting the, the training data. So that's why we have to use validation for empirical base. But this, these results suggest that we could potentially do away with validation. Um, so I'm putting a question mark there because it's open for discussion. But the main point is that we avoid overfitting parameters using regularization, we avoid overfitting hyperparameters using validation data, but is there a way that we can uh, just have one data set, you know, make life simpler, have one data set and fit the, the parameters and the hyperparameters on the same data? Um, yeah, so I only have maybe like a minute left, uh, so I'll, I'll just um, wrap up. So the second experiment was on logistic regression, only on uh, two hyperparameters. Um, and uh, again, type 2 empirical base does the best, but interestingly, the validation um, does better than no validation, and I think that's because um, uh, we, we have, um, we're using uh, kind of a maximum likelihood approach to fitting the, the parameters. So in this case, the validation data set is playing the role of avoiding overfitting parameters, not hyperparameters. Um, so there's some discussion. If you want, want to uh, follow up on this, please come to the poster. Um, but so here's uh, my conclusions. So next time you come up with a new approximate inference algorithm, consider letting M3C handle the hyperparameter outer loop. Um, it's simple to implement, and in the future I'm going to try on other models and um, uh, kind of connect it more deeply with Bayesian quadrature. Thanks very much. Thank you. So we have um, time for questions. There's a question. I was trying to explain it more on the relationship with the question. I was just thinking.
you say a bit more on the relationship with Daisy Kutcher? It's, it seems like you might get sort of lower variance, but more biased estimates or something. They're doing it this way. Yeah, um, Daisy Kutcher um, uh, places two GP priors. So if you, if you look at the predicted density, there's a, there's a prior on um, the predicted data and the prior on the likelihood. Uh, and then you look at the ratio between uh, some combination of those. And that actually requires a, like a map, map approximation uh, at some point during the derivation. Um, and it's also quite complicated. Uh, so I, I don't have any deep intuition or for whether that would have um, lower variance, but um, it's something I want to look at. Okay, maybe one more question. If not, let's thank our speaker.